Well, it's all about working out who's telling the truth and who's not here, this show, Traitors. How easy is it to do that if you're in the show, if you're watching it on TV? Well, let's talk to Andy Coley now, who's a body language expert and participated on a similar programme called The Spies. Morning, Andy. Good morning. How are you? Yeah, really good. So how easy is it then to tell if someone's fibbing? That, that's a really interesting question. I, the key thing, and, and this was really highlighted last night um, with Maddie, who who was a faithful who got voted out. And she was pretty convinced about who one of the traitors was, Will, um, that once you get to know somebody, you spot the differences in their body language. Because once you kind of have a baseline of people, your instinct is really important. That's why it's, it's often easier to spot the lies in the people that you know than the people that you don't know, because you can spot differences. Um, and there's lots of, of things that you can notice if you're looking for them on the show that they're showing anyway. You know, they're sort of looking down whilst they're talking, can be a bit of a clue, the, the hands over the mouth to kind of hide the lie. They're all the little things that instinctively, sometimes we we pick up this stuff so unconsciously. Like most of our communication is nonverbal. So therefore, picking up the subtle clues is really a, 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 a good indicator about whether somebody is lying to you or not. It's it's far often easier to lie to a stranger than it is to lie to people that get to know you. But that's the the interesting thing about this show is that they have to get to know each other. They have to have the rapport. They're doing tasks together. They're sharing bits of their life that, that won't be on camera. I know that from from being on the spy show. So it'll be really sort of forming this this bond and this little unit. And then they're going to sit around the table and vote each other off and and do things that that backstab each other. And again, that can be really tough when you're doing it and they're added pressure is they're doing it for money when i was on the beat the channel four show spies that wasn't even for money that was just for 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 the enjoyment of being on there but yeah it can be really treacherous seeing we started with 20 and five got voted off and disappeared before we even started the show so that can really put the tension in you and they're using that psychology to to promote and highlight things and that will that will get the people fidgeting that will get them you know doing all the little non-verbal stuff that you don't even see on the on the those clues on the show that can really highlight to you is somebody lying to you or not and how easy is it to to cover that up because, you know, you, you've mentioned looking down, covering, you know, I've heard sometimes touching your nose as well might be a giveaway that you might be telling a porky pie. Uh, so we sort of know some of these tells, if you like. How difficult is it to cover those up? If you know you're fibbing and you're maybe conscious that you might be giving something away in your body language, is it easy to fight those those nonverbal things or not? Yeah, absolutely. And, and bear in mind that people going on the show know that they're going onto a show where they would have to be lying. And so they, they will already have probably practiced, they'll have a game plan for it, they'll be practicing it. It's probably not a coincidence that people who are used to being on stage, comedian, the actors are doing pretty well in this to get near the end. So these are people used to taking on other roles and other personas as well. Um, so people, and if people believe their own lie, then that's when they start to, you know, really be convincing to other people as well. But when it gets psychological, when the the, the chips are down, you saw that with Will, you know, he's got lots of conflict and stuff going on now because his game plan is starting to unravel as he gets nervous about what other people might do. And that's when you see the nerves and often the nerves are related to to people who are lying um, and other clues. Sometimes people will oversimplify a story as in they won't provide much detail because there's no detail to provide. Or they might have this really rehearsed. Oh, and I did this and I went there and I did that. And then they'll flip the conversation back away from themselves onto somebody else. And so there's a lot of diversion conversation happening here. Oh, yeah, well, you know, they thought it was me. But what do you reckon about the other person? Yeah. And so there's a lot of that stuff going on as well. On I the bet show. you love I bet you love shows like this, being a body language expert. I bet you're watching it. And you've obviously you've been involved in another show similar as well, haven't you? I bet you love it. Oh, yeah, I love watching this. I, I love watching the, you know, the game shows you know, where they have to lie to each other. Or well, there's a great um, uh, TV show, um, Lie to Me, with Tim Roth, that's fantastic about micromuscle expressions and the work of a guy called Paul Ekman, who was who was absolutely always able to tell when somebody was lying to him, even his kids, even his wife, his partner. You know, nobody could ever get away with lying to him because he was so good at reading the micro expressions that, that people give away in their, in their facial and their tonality. Fascinating stuff. Andy, great to have you on the show. Uh, that is Andy Coley on BBC Essex, where the time now 7.32. 